So uh, we are artist advocates and uh, we stand next to you really and say thank you. We, are, we feel very privileged. Right on. That's an important thing, I think, this artist advocacy concept, because that's what drives us, and we feel that in joining together with you in this advocacy concept, it creates for a really great exchange between artists and audience. It creates community on many levels, and a lot of times that's what we've talked about with Tales from the Tavern, is that it is a community-building endeavor. And I wanted to acknowledge that at the very foundation of that are our sponsors in this community who make this possible. And... Um, Again, they just say, hey, we think this is a really cool thing to be happening in the community. They are obviously not doing it because of the great promotional bang for their buck. They're doing it because they, you know, really care. Thank you all so much for being here. Tales from the Tavern. We feel it is a community environment. Thanks for being here. It is our pleasure to welcome to the stage tonight Rosie Flores Gregley.
brought us fresh wine. She wants us to stay. And don't you just love Carol and Ron? So, what a great brother and sister to me. Feels real family around here, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, Greg, why don't we do something really cool for the folks here? Um, if you would, if maybe if you would get your uh, mandolin or, or your dobro, let's do um, let's do boxcars. This is a song that Butch Hancock wrote, and I got to tour with Butch Hancock for a little while, and I learned this song from him. And uh, Greg produced a wonderful record on it, on the Rockabilly Philly record. And it made it into a couple of movies, and that was cool. I heard it in a movie. You heard it? Did you see it? There was a movie called Heavy with Liv Tyler and the late, great Shelley Lennox. And um, they played the whole song. They played the whole four minutes of it. You know where the good song stops and it goes into the bass solo? They played the whole thing. That, and if, I guess you don't know, but I mean, in movies, you, you know, if you get a song in a movie, they play like, like three or four lines of it usually. See what a good producer you are, Greg. <laughs> the sound of one hand clapping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, let's really hear it for Greg.
I started working back there in my adult years was when I was in the Screaming Sirens, which was a cowpunk, they called it back, all-girl cowpunk band from L.A. And we started playing in Austin, and I fell head over heels for Austin and the music scene and everything. And um, so that was kind of in the back of my head, that if I did move to Texas, it would be Austin is where I would belong. So it took till 1988 for it to happen. And I went there and and uh, stayed there for a couple of years. And um, during that time, I lost my, my record deal with Warner Brothers. They didn't know what to do with me. I was too rock for country, too country for rock. And, and um, I didn't really want to do the pop country thing. And I wanted it to be more, you know, kind of a traditional 50s kind of country. And I just wasn't having any luck. So I went, anyway, I went back to Austin, and I went back to L.A., put a band together with Greg Lees, and um, we produced together a couple of records. And um, then it, all of a sudden it was 1997, and I went back to Austin to join Sleep at the Wheel. Oh, wow. So there I was living in there again, and I toured with them on a big tour bus, and I'm like, this is great, I'm on a tour bus. and. I'm playing, you know, corporate parties and making good money. And, and with a great band. And with a great band and Cindy Cash Dollar and yeah. Steel Guitar and Ray Benson, great guitar player, yeah. real renowned, Grammy winning band. But I still was losing my rosiness. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't do the rosy songs. I couldn't right. do Bandera Highway. And, you know, I kind of just felt like this, is, this has been fun, but I need to go back. I am. Uh... I started writing this, I was about 16 years old, and um, I always, you know, that I guess that's why I live in Texas again. It's the third time I've moved back there. And I always have this longing, and maybe it's because I had just such a great childhood there, you know, and I think y'all can relate to this. I mean, wherever you grow up, it's, if you've had a good childhood, that place is always really special to you. So let me take you to that place, wherever it is, while I take you on my childhood memories on this song here called Bandera Highway. ago to reminisce with my old friends I heard some real good country music and fell in love with the rodeo man his eyes were bluer than a misty morning I think I'm going back Summer breeze, you gotta 
savor all your childhood, childhood memories. Driving slow with the window down by the river, I could see. Deja vu was knocking at my door Something here remembers me I've been a long, long way from yesterday So far away I couldn't see Somehow lately I decided I page of history So there I will Take me there Bandera Highway To the places where I grew Meet the mesquite trees And the warm summer breeze You gotta savor all your I turn some corners around this old town And I've seen battle scars around the Alamo And it sure amazes me to think about How they fought so long ago in this old town Oh, but here I go to pack my bags again San Antonio without a teardrop in my eyes. Take me there, Bandera Highway, to the places where I grew. Meet the mesquite trees and the warm summer breeze. Savor all your childhood. I'll go and pick something I've just written. This is something new. And um, it's another, you know, breakup song. <laughs> you know, this is, this is one. <laughs> My cousin's getting married in Santa Fe in a couple weeks. And she says, Rosie, we're looking for one of your songs to play after we get married. And we, they're all just like about breakup. There's no. <laughs> I said, there must be something good in there, you know, something positive, like somebody, someone, or something. This is definitely one she won't be playing. <laughs> well, my mom, she always said, you know, stay single as long as you can, so I'm just following her advice. <laughs> Thank you. 
black lines on my paper sad words on my mind if you could read between the lines i write maybe you wouldn't be so blind you draw lines between us i can't cross or even find like a moat that wraps around your heart that quells the rhythm of my rhyme Lucinda Williams and, and Dwayne Jarvis. Yeah. They're like, you got to come to Nashville. It's happening here. And, you know, hanging out in Lower Broadway. And, and you hadn't you know, been in Nashville, really? I, part of the Nashville scene before that? Nope, I'd just been signed out of there on the Warner Brothers thing. 
But I just went, you know, I'll try it. It sounds fun. And every time I'd go there, we'd hang out and there'd be great parties. And, you know, it was just really fun. And, and so I moved there. And the first, I'd say the first three, four years there were really fun. What was your experience in Nashville? Well, I love Lower Broadway and I love the Grand Ole Opry and Country Music Hall of Fame and history. I love, you know, being around, you know, people like George Jones and his wife and, um, you know, the people that I did meet in the, that worked the Opry and Roy A. Cuff and... Um, and did you play the Opry? I played the Opry before we moved there even. And I like that whole country music history, but I don't like the music business, kind of like the corporate, um, you know, the details about, you know, you can't really get signed to the major labels anymore <clears throat> if you're not really, really young and, and or don't have a whole lot of money or, you know, it's just, you know, if you don't have the right manager and it just, it's just, I've seen so many great songwriters like even Lucinda Williams, who is pretty successful as a songwriter, right? Not Nashville, she wasn't. Right, sure. You know? Sure. So it's just a different world there. And I, I thought, and Lucinda thought, and I thought, and Dwight, you know, a lot of people would sense there were people like Emmy Lou and Steve Earle there, that maybe there would be a whole other, you know, strength in numbers about, you know, being for the other side of Nashville right. and trying to, like, bring it back to the real stuff again. And I wanted to be part of that army. I wanted to be part of that. And I was for a while, and it was really fun. But it, it just sort of started, started wearing on me, and um, I didn't really feel happy there anymore. And um, I just kind of went, well, why don't we try going back to California? And, you know, my family was here, and so I was headed here. But I, I just kind of got stuck back in Texas again because I love it so much. And, um, you know, obviously they like me there. They've made it a rosy forest day. Yeah. But not even just the mayor likes me. I mean, I get put in the, the country um, hall of fame, you know, their Texas hall of fame. But um, there's just, you know, it's just the fans, the people um, that come out to the clubs and hear your music, they react kind of like your crowd tonight, you know, where people will let react and they're, you know, hooting and hollering and they're like, let you know that they dig the crap out of what you're doing. Whereas in Nashville, it seems like that there's so many, it's just a lot of industry people. It's not really they're, a they're there to kind of fold their arms and sort of check it out and just see like, what is she doing that I need to do? Or uh, why is she doing that? she'll never make it in the big time or you know what I mean yeah you just think everybody's being really judgmental of you because they're just kind of well, not reacting as a music fan Greg and I used to play at this bar down in North Hollywood called the, the Palomino Club yeah, and, uh, yeah you know yeah. you've been there we've all been there and so it was such a great place and so many great memories I decided I'd write a song I wrote this on an airplane one day just thinking about how great those days were it's called the Palomino Days Thank you. Well, headed on that west from Texas one day with the guitar and my dreams and something to say. I found the heart of country music in California. Yeah. Walking through the door He said you gotta talk to Tommy If you wanna be a country star Well I looked back and I saw him On the phone behind the bar Tommy gave me a nod and sent me Up on stage with my guitar Those were the good old days In California It was hard of country music Nothing else got in the way Wailing and 
Emmy Lou. Well, Calamino days, I miss them through and through. playing in Encinitas, which was um, north of San Diego, and um, it was a club that this guy Jack Tempchin owned, sure. and uh, it was called the Stingery, mm -hmm. and I was in a band called Rosie and the Screamers, and it was around 1977, and so the place was packed, and then all of a sudden, this car came crashing like a Sam Peckinpah movie, it was like slow motion or something. It I'm on stage, okay, like, let's see, where's the stage? The stage is like, okay, this is the stage, I'm on stage. Right there is a, a, a huge window, right? The car came crashing through the window. It was, the window was like wider than those windows. It was like wide enough for a car to get through, actually. Big window, it's facing the street, um, which was, you know, Pacific Coast Highway. And it came crashing through right into the pinball machines. And so the pinball machines are like bang, 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 ding, 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 ding. And people are just like, whoa. Wow. And we kept playing, we kept playing, and nobody died. That was the cool thing, nobody died. One of the, my favorite songwriters, when I first got to the town of Nashville, um, 
I met the greatest songwriter in the world, Harlan Howard. I got to meet that guy. And he, you know, some of you that might not know him, he wrote I Fall to Pieces for Patsy Cline and um, Tiger by the Tail for Buck Owens. Just on and on. And he wrote this next song I'm going to sing for you. And I, I got to go to his house and he made me a sandwich and played me the song. I felt really lucky about that. And it's, 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 it's the greatest divorce song that's ever been written, I think. <laughs> Not to be confused with Lyle Lovett's song. Some people get that kind of But um, by golly, if you've been divorced and you need a song, this, I got your song. This is your song right now. <laughs> and it is called, God May Forgive You, But I Won't. Here at home, 
something tells me some of y'all have maybe can relate to that song. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to do one of the kids' eggs. Song and sing a little something in Spanish for the folks, maybe? Yeah. This is one off my, uh, hum, um, what's the name of this album? Uh, <laughs> Once More with Feeling. It's this little song called It's Over. I remember when you said that I was just the only one for you. Come on, clap your hands. Let's do it. And I just can't forget the times you reassured me and I feel so good. But these times are so different. Nothing I can say or I can do About your love is fading About your love It is no longer true It's hard to turn away From all the good times We can share with you the year. Yeah. I'm holding on to memories of life And the turning in the tea Thought we could resist. Jesus, we are not forgetting. Ya no vivo en tu corazón. Me tratas con indiferencia. Ya no estás a mi lado. Las estrellas quieran tuyo I have my own church, 
and I have always had my own church. Tell me. Well, it's it's the church of uh, you know my family and my own angels that I have around me, and I pray and 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 I pray to my higher power, and and for me, you know, it's kind of the church of of my own you know surrounding angels that yeah. you know are with me. You know, I do have some great angels around me. I'm really blessed. I feel like it's a lot of my you know older you know aunts and uncles and cousins and grandparents that have gone and now my mom and dad are up there and i swear my mom my, my mom my angel mom woke me up when i fell asleep at the wheel the other day when i was driving here and i felt like somebody just shoved me and i was like going i was like going like this somebody just went and i was like well, and i was like woke up you know and i was like wow it's never happened to me like that where I felt like somebody was shoving me, you know. Well, I've never really fell asleep at the wheel. Lonesome star in a big Texas sky finds my heart in trouble tonight. little town was filled with romance for me. Now all I see are small dusty streets, but the music still pulls at my heart. Should I stay get back in the car? Out of the West is this place you never know. If I stay, this pain will blow.
been my lifestyle. I just never had the time to be, you know, courted and, you know, date somebody for a really long time to see if it's going to turn into the... The one. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've gone, you know, two to four years dating, but it's never just turned into a serious, you know, let's get married and have kids. And I was like, why should I do that? And then I have to get off the road. Then I have to stop playing music. It's like, why should I do that? Wow. It just didn't make sense. Single rose, that's how we started. Colors fade now that we parted. Walked away into my heart. I watched the petals fall apart. Falling from a single. The thorns they get sharper. Cut like a knife. The night's a little darker. I'm longing for your kisses, baby, but oh, that's a way it goes. I'm dying like that single road. Those were the days. Miss your sweet old ways. Oh, yeah. I was crazy over you. Wish I had another chance to start this old romance. But I'd be sure to never let you go. Oh, oh. That's not the kind of success I've had. I've had the other kind of success where, you know, I've been able to, you know, pay my bills and eat and, you know, live and travel around Europe and everything for my whole life, you know, and I have great friends all over the place. So that, to me, that's success. Yeah. You don't count your success by how many houses you own or anything. You know, it'd be nice and 
it'd be cool if Quentin Tarantino would put a song in the movie or something where I'd make a lot of money or, you know, Bonnie Raitt would cut one of my songs or Shania Twain or somebody. That would be cool. It'd be like winning the lottery. But that's not going to make me a happier person or make me feel more successful. It'll just mean that I have more money. All right, we got time for one more song. Thank you again so much for coming and supporting live music and sounding this. This Toronto Carol Tales from the Tavern. Cheers, big ears. Okay, let's 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 hit you with one more rocking song here. Just to kind of get you a little little hitch in your get along as you're going out the door or, or going over to get a CD and I'll meet you guys there later. Or going over to the bar because I'm sure it's still open, right? Or bar is still open. I should hope so. <laughs> I want you to rock with me on this one. Three, three, four, one, two, three, four, yeah. Such a cool thing. I mean, I wouldn't change a thing. You're, you're, um, you're one of the best. Um, um, you have 
the best audience. You know how to sell a show out. You know how to make somebody coming from out of town feel really special, even though they're not like a huge star, you know. But in our hearts, you are. And, are. and you guys appreciate me. I'm definitely, you know, been out there a long time. But yeah, I'm not a household word. Household word. And um, that wine's getting me talking for you. Know. But uh, you made me feel like I was important and special, and Greg too. And you know, you just can't ask for more than that. Right. So I just thank you so much and for making us you. feel welcome. When we get up there and we feel good and we feel appreciated and we get up and make people happy because we feel happy. You yeah. know, it's just like it's like an infectious thing. You know, so. Thank you for coming. We had a, we had a thank you for throwing down and and. Yeah. Not only given your great songs and, and stories and stuff, but your energy was uh, invigorating, and it was it well, it thanks. fueled people. Good. Thank you very, it was a very positive force here tonight. Good. Well, I feel like like we we had a successful night then. All right, you guys rock out there. You do. Thank you again so much for coming.
Thank you, folks.